right, this is going to be video number 11. Uh, it's a short video, kind of debated on whether or not to put it on here, but there was a change, and um, I had originally um, welded on these uh, front forks of this bike on the back here. I thought maybe, I don't know, it would make it more elongated or uh, kind of give it a cool look, but I uh, decided that it um, wasn't really the look I was going for. It was kind of like, I don't know, more futuristic or streamlined or something as opposed to the historical nature of the bike. And I was trying to also accomplish, um, you know, something else there, which is provide a support for the uh, relocation of the back of that, uh, of the seat where the springs are. So uh, I just w really wasn't happy with the way it looked and uh, decided to go another route. So I uh, busted out the grinder and um, took the forks off and um, I'm going to be making a uh, seat support that is a little bit more appropriate and I'm making it out of just a piece of flat stock metal um, that I had in the little junk area and um, then cutting down and uh, fitting to size a uh, air chisel um, that had just been worn down and uh, really wasn't functioning properly anymore for its intended purpose. So that was also in the junk uh, in the junk area of uh, little metal parts. So uh, cost of this is uh, zero. Uh, we're pretty much zero. Um, and uh, I think it turned out pretty well. So there's uh, you know some grinding and then also some welding uh, involved here. And one of the other problems that I was experiencing with having that those uh, forks on the back is I decided to uh, put the rear caliper uh, brakes back on here. Um, you know, if you recall from watching other previous videos in this series, um, you know, I installed uh, new front forks that have uh, like shocks on them and then fabricated a uh, disc brake system uh, for the front. And just for a little added lever, uh, you know, measure of safety, I uh, decided to put the... Um, you know, brakes on the back of it too, because, you know, this is a coaster bike, uh, coaster brake bike, uh, you know, you push backwards on the pedals, but in order to put these engines on here, you got to get rid of the little brakes in the coaster bike, in the coaster brakes uh, section, in the back hub of the wheel. Uh, that's also covered in one of the other videos. So really what I would be left with is, uh, is just the front, uh, disc brakes and, um, yeah, you know, I'm pretty confident that they'll work, but you know I haven't tested them yet, um, and just wanted to give it just a little bit uh, extra measure of safety by having you know two sets of brakes. Uh, so you'll see the you know the front there, there's that disc brake, and then the back will have those calipers. So in any event, those forks that I had welded on there for support of the seat and to give it kind of like a more elongated look. Um, and I was thinking about maybe putting some storage or something on the back. I don't know what I was thinking in the beginning. But anyhow, uh, they were interfering with uh, where those uh, brakes would go. So for all those different reasons, you know, I decided to get rid of that fork look. And I think it was the right decision. And, um, you know, just manufacture a, uh, a new support for the back of this seat here um, because... You know, I relocated where the seat was was uh, was originally on this bike. So originally, I had a post in the in the middle of the seat, and uh, you know the seat stuck up really high. So in order to make uh, the seat, you know, look more appropriate for the uh, historical nature of the uh, build there, um, I relocated the seat, relocated where uh, the seat was um, attached to the main frame of the bicycle, uh, which is in the front. But that just would not be enough support over time, for sure. So it needed more support. And, uh, and this was my solution. So this is just, uh, you know, using that stock bed frame, um, you know, just kind of marking and cutting to length the little pieces of uh, metal there. And I love welding with this, uh, with this type of metal. It, uh, it's not as sensitive or as thin as, you know, the tank or the bike itself, you know, the tank and the bike, you know, those are made out of like aluminum based uh, or polymers or something like that, alloys. And you can see the chisel right there. And this thing was just all rusted and gunked up, but it did have that little uh, flare on there, 
which if you're familiar with pneumatic air chisels, that little flare is where the spring uh, attaches, you know, that keeps the chisel from, uh, you know, flying out. It, it brings it back into place, you know, so the air chisel, you know, it, uh, the air pneumatic part of it, like, you know, pushes the chisel forward, but in order to bring it back into place for the next, you know, uh, mechanism of how that functions, uh, the spring brings it back. So I like that little area right there um, on the chisel itself that had kind of like the little flare. I just thought that it added just a little bit more detail to it and um, decided to go with that. So you can just see right there, there's that flare. I like that look right there. So it wasn't just like a straight, you know, piece of round stock or something. So uh, what I'm doing is, uh, you know, just cutting a piece of that, uh, you know, bed frame to length so it'll fit back in there. And um, I'm going to drill a little hole through the center, not big enough for the chisel to go through it, but uh, I'm going to weld underneath there. So I'm going to weld all the way around it on the top, and then also do a weld from uh, from underneath uh, to give it you know, some extra support. And that turned out uh, really good. So um, that's just a you know extra little trick that uh, you know if you want to provide some extra support for something. You know, you can drill through your main piece and um, with a smaller hole and then weld through that hole uh, into the bottom of the piece that you want to attach right there. So, uh, so just uh, this is just a quick clip of, uh, you know, doing the markings on there and, uh, you know, showing how I center it and stuff like that. So, breaking out the welder, just doing some tacks uh, all the way around. So, uh, you know, don't forget... Um, you know, the technique on this welding stuff is that you want to go and put a couple tacks on, you know, at least two sides. You know, if you, if you can do it on all four sides, that's great to keep it from warping. Uh, and there's the bottom right there, that hole, and, uh, you know, putting the weld through. And that adds a lot of support to it. So, but, you know, the technique on doing this welding is, is that, you know, you want to go back and forth, back and forth with a couple tacks to hold it in place. Because that heat will warp whatever you're welding, and it'll li literally lift, or uh, you know, one side like, higher or lower, uh, or make um, you know your 90 degree weld um, off. So it'll be like you know 85 degrees or something like that. Um, just because of the heat will make um, you know, like, uh, warp. So I decided here to do most of the welds under uh, the bike. Uh, to support the main cross beam there, and uh, just so you wouldn't really see it, I wouldn't have to clean it up a whole lot. Um, but uh, fortunately, you know, this thing didn't require too much. I did have to grind down a little bit the top of that chisel part to fit uh, inside of the um, attachment to where the seat pole originally went on the bike. So I feel pretty comfortable about this. Uh, you can remove it. Um, there's just a bolt that um, you know attaches that uh, you know bottom seat post there uh, to the chisel, so it's not permanently affixed right there. So you can remove it, and uh, it looks pretty good. Got rid of that big fork in the back, which I think is was the right move, and put that support right there. You can see the bolt I was just talking about. So you can remove this uh, if you need to. And I like using that little chisel in there with that little flare. I think that looks really, really good. Much better than having that fork in there. I'm really pleased with the way this came out. And, uh, you know, this metal was like good quality metal, so it's going to be strong. And it'll be uh, safe and provide good support, you know, for the weight uh, for the rider. And at the same time, made plenty of room that I can now add, um, you know, those extra brakes to the back. So that extra level of safety and I did splurge for $13 and got this extra fancy kickstand um, just because uh, you know the bike was getting a little heavy with the motor on there with the engine so hey hit like and subscribe really appreciate the feedback and uh, have a happy Easter everybody take care